Hello everyone, I hope you are doing good and staying safe. Welcome to yet another interesting tutorial on SQL keys by Simply Code. In today's session, we learn what exactly are keys in SQL and look at some various types of keys that are used in SQL databases. More on that soon, but before we get started, if you are new to the channel and haven't subscribed already, consider getting subscribed to our channel Simply Code to stay updated with all the latest tech content and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. So without any further delay, let's get started with today's topic. Firstly, let us understand the agenda for today's session. We'll start the tutorial by understanding what exactly are SQL keys. And then we'll understand why we use SQL keys. And finally, we'll go through some different types of keys that are used in SQL. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into today's topic on SQL keys. So what are keys in SQL? SQL keys plays an important role in relational databases. It is used for identifying unique rows from table. A key is a subset of columns in a table that allows a row to be uniquely identified. So a key can be more than just a column and every row in the table will have a unique value for the key or a unique combination of values if the key consists of more than just one column. Now as you know databases are used to store massive amounts of information which is stored across multiple tables. Now each table might be uh, having more than thousands of records or rows. Now needless to say there will be many duplicate rows with redundant information. So how do we deal with that? Now how do we manage these records that are storing only unique data? Now for that we might need a combination of one or more columns in the database table to uniquely identify a row in a database. So in that case we use the SQL keys. Now SQL keys creates constraints that can be used to enforce data integrity in SQL. Now as you know a database must adhere to certain properties to maintain integrity and quality of the data that is storing. Keys and constraints are rules that define what data values are allowed in certain data columns. They are an important database concept as well as for SQL and are part of database schema definition. Defining keys and constraints is part of database design process and ensures that data within a database is reliable and maintains its integrity. Let us now understand why we use SQL keys. SQL keys identify each record separately and uniquely. Now a key is used in the definition of various kinds of integrity constraints and a table in a database represents a collection of records or events for a particular relation. Now since there are thousands and thousands of such records, some of which may be duplicated. Now in order to uh, identify these records uniquely and separately, we need SQL keys. SQL keys allows user to establish and identify a relationship between the tables as well. And finally, SQL keys access or manages the stored data quickly and smoothly. Now that we've understood what SQL keys are and why we use them, let us now discuss some of the various types of keys in SQL. SQL keys are broadly classified into various types such as primary key, super key, candidate key, alternate key, composite key, foreign key. Now let us discuss each and every type of key in detail with an example. Firstly, let us look at what exactly is primary key. The primary key is one of the most important and commonly used SQL keys in the databases. The primary key is in SQL is a single or a group of fields or columns that can uniquely identify a row in a table. Putting it simply, it is a column that accepts unique values for each row. Therefore, whenever you use the insert into command to insert new values in a table, the value for a primary key column or columns need to be unique. Now, primary key advantages is mainly it uniquely identifies each row of a table. Also, it gets a unique index for each primary key column that helps with faster access. Now there are properties uh, which are helpful of SQL primary key. They are it enforces uniqueness by not accepting any duplicate values and a primary key also uniquely identifies each field and can take only one primary key for a table. Now a primary key column cannot accept null values as well. Let us consider an example here. Consider a student table which is having uh, various fields such as student ID, roll number, name class section, age and address. Now if you look at uh, the table clearly, student ID can be taken as a primary key here. Also you can take the roll number but since we are taking the records of all the students in a school, 
that's why we are taking the student id as the primary key now if you take the records of the students for a particular class then you can take the roll number as a primary key as well let us now understand the syntax of primary key now to create a new table with a column defined as a primary key you can use the keyword primary key at the end of the definition of that column and the syntax is create table table name and within the parentheses mention the column names and its column types and finally mention the primary key inside the brackets so for example if i want to create a table which is having id last name first name and age in that i am going to use the primary key here as id so in this way you can use the primary key in sql next let us discuss about the candidate key a candidate key is defined as set of one or more columns that can identify a record uniquely in a table so basically candidate key is a super key with no repeated attributes by the way uh, we'll discuss about the super key in a while uh, the primary key should be selected from all the candidate keys and every table must have at least a single candidate key and a table can have multiple candidate keys but only a single primary key a candidate key shouldn't have redundant attributes that means it should not have any duplicate values in the table now unlike primary key the attributes of candidate key can contain null values and as discussed a table can have more than one candidate keys and it is also called as the minimal super key guys uh, that's because uh, we select a candidate key from a set of super keys such that the selected candidate key is the minimum attribute required to uniquely identify the rows in a table so let us understand this with an example consider the students table here which is having various columns such as student id roll number name age address and contact now as you know uh, we can take the student id as the primary key and with that we can take the roll number as well as the contact of the students as the candidate key here because all these three columns alone can uniquely satisfy the condition of the candidate key here so in this way we can use the candidate keys in s next let us discuss about alternate key in sql alternate key are subset of candidate keys that can also uniquely identify tuples in a table which are not chosen as primary key for example consider the employee table here which has columns employee id employee name job department number pan number aadhar number and uan now if you look at the table uh, that columns that can uniquely identify each and every record are basically employee id pan number aadhar number and uan number now since we have taken the employee id as a primary key and the rest of all the columns that are not chosen as a primary key are considered to be alternate keys so in this case we can take the pan number aadhar number uan number as our alternate keys next let us discuss about the super key in sql Super key is another important key that is used day to day usage in SQL databases. A super key or a simple key is a combination of all possible attributes which can use uniquely identify the row or tuples in a table. That means that a super key may have some extra attributes which isn't necessary for uniquely identifying the rows in the table. A super key is a in SQL is a superset of primary key, candidate key and alternate key. that means basically it is a combination of all the keys such as primary candidate and alternate keys as discussed super key will have additional attributes that are not needed for any unique identification and finally super keys with the least number of attributes form the candidate keys so let us take an example again consider the employee table here and if you look at the possible keys that will be for super keys are employee id pan number employee id aadhar number employee id uan pan number aadhar number pan number uan aadhar number uan employee id pan number as well as uan and finally pan number aadhar number and uan now all the above keys are able to uniquely identify each row so each of these keys is a super key now again in this example we have like more than 6 uh, super, uh, super keys but all of them cannot become a candidate key here only those super keys would become a candidate key which have no redundant attribute for example uh, if you take employee id pan number this key cannot be considered as a candidate key because uh, when we take this subset of this key we get two attributes that is employee id as well as the pan number 
Now each of these attributes is basically a candidate key. So it is a minimal super key, but hence this key is not a candidate key. And finally, let us discuss about the foreign key in SQL. A foreign key is a column or combination of columns that is used to establish and force a link between the data in two tables to control the data that can be stored in the foreign key table. In a foreign key reference, a link is created between two tables when the column or columns hold the primary key value for one table and are referenced by the column or columns in other table. Now this column becomes a foreign key in the second table. The table with the foreign key is known as the child table and the table with the primary key is known as the referenced or parent table. Now as foreign key has bought the referential integrity in SQL, uh, which means that it requires that a foreign key must have a matching primary key or it must be null. This constraint is specified between two tables that is parent and child and it maintains the correspondence between the rows in these tables. It means that the reference from a row in one table to another table must be valid. Now the foreign key uh, helps in maintaining the data integrity of the table and allows easy navigation between two instances or attributes. It is also used in SQL to make the database data consistent and it is also used for the prevention of any action that may result in destruction of relation between these two tables. Let us understand this with an example. Now consider two tables here, employee and department. The employee table has employee ID, employee name, job, department number, PAN number, other number and UN number. And the department table has employee ID and the department name. Now clearly the employee ID, which is the primary key in the first table employee is acting as a cross reference for the department table. That is uh, the employee ID acts as the foreign key here for the department table. So in this way you can use the foreign key in SQL. And similarly, we have some other types of uh, keys in SQL, which are not that significant in its usage. The first one being is unique key. A unique key is same as a primary key with the difference being the existence of one null value in a table field or a row. For example, consider a student table having student ID, roll number and its name. Now, for some reasons, if the student is leaving the school, then his roll number might be deleted. Although his student ID will be preserved for further assistance. So since there is a null value in roll number, it can be considered as a unique key and student ID can be considered as a primary key. Similarly, we have composite key. A composite key is a combination of two or more attributes that can together uh, can uniquely identify a tuple in a table. And that brings us to the end of today's session. Uh, that was all about uh, the SQL keys. So let us just quickly recap what we've discussed, uh, the different types of keys. So to summarize this, I've created a table here, employee ID, employee name, other passport, department ID, which is uh, the table one that is employee table and we have department ID and department columns in the second table that is department table. Now here clearly employee ID is the primary key since it uniquely identifies each and every record in the table and employee ID, other number, password can be taken as candidate keys because they are set of more than one primary keys since the, so they can be considered as the candidate key here. Now alternate keys which are other than the primary key that is employee ID. So I'm taking other card and passport as the alternate keys here. Now the combination of all these keys that such as primary key, candidate key, alternate key forms a super key. Now I'm taking the passport as the unique key since not everyone has a passport to their name. So I'm taking the passport attribute here as the unique key. And finally the foreign key is the department ID as it points uh, to the reference to the second table that is department table. So in this way you can use the SQL keys accordingly. So that was SQL keys in a nutshell guys. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you found this tutorial informative and helpful. If you have any further queries regarding any of the topics covered in today's session, feel free to let us know in the comment section below and a team of experts will be more than happy to help resolve all your queries at the earliest. Until next time, stay safe and keep coding.